I've got a self-propelled Husqvarna lawnmower here with a Honda engine on it and the homeowner said that he can't get it started. He actually said he mowed with it twice this year and he was able to get it started by tipping it up like this and then down and he actually said he tipped it to the side to each side which isn't a good idea but that's actually a great idea if your mower won't start in spring and it's been sitting with gas in it especially old gas your needle valve and the float can stick and that can help unstick it sometimes and get your mower going but he's got a bigger problem with that he said he actually had to do that last year to get it started too so and he did leave the gas in it over the winter which is not a good idea so I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get it started and I have a feeling that the carburetor needs a good cleaning it's probably all gummed up in there but let's see we'll check it out see what's wrong with it and hopefully get it going let's do it first thing I want to do is check the oil and he's a pretty meticulous guy so I'm sure it's got oil in it and it does so we can go ahead try to start it first pull doesn't get any better than that oh Now it doesn't want to start. Aha! That's strange. Now I'm going to do a test here. I'm going to spray a little starting fluid in there and see if it'll fire up. That'll give me a hint what might be wrong. Got a little starting fluid here. Could use a new air filter for sure. Holy smokes! That's not good. I'm gonna go ahead and try to start it. Maybe it's not getting enough air to pull the fuel through. No, that's not it. <laughs> Somebody put a gas shut off on here and that's on the off position. It might help to open that up, huh? Interesting. Still doesn't want to start. Wow. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to go ahead and check and see if we have spark. Go ahead and pull the plug out. Plug looks good. We're watching for spark right in there. Now when you test for spark, the base of the plug, the metal of the plug has to touch metal on the engine. If you're all plastic around there, sometimes what I do is I'll just stick a socket in the hole and touch that against that. But we've got metal here. So let's see if we got spark. I don't see any spark. Very interesting. All right, since we don't have spark, I want to check the coil. Take this cover off. There's our coil right there. And here's our kill wire. And we'll unplug the kill wire. And that'll isolate the coil here. And if we don't have spark, with that isolated, that means you got a bad coil. If you do get spark, that means you got a short somewhere 
in this wire in the system. So let's go ahead and check for spark. All right, I put the cover back on and the recoil. Well, let's go ahead and check for spark. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeehaw! We got spark, baby. So there's a short in that wire somewhere. And we'll pop it back apart quick. This is kind of handy, it's slick. Real easy to take this cover off and the recoil off. Now, this is our culprit here. Let's see if we can trace this wire and see what's going on. Now, the kill wire on this one ties in here goes underneath the flywheel all the way around and it plugs in where this brake shutoff is. So I'm going to have to take the flywheel off to inspect that wire and the connection there. Let's we'll see if my impact will pop this off. No. Nope. Going to go a little heavier duty here. That didn't do it. All right. See if we can get it this way. Now a lot of you homeowners aren't gonna have this. And what I do, and what I've done, is you can take, put a socket on there, tie your ratchet to it, and hit it with a hammer and the impact from that can break that loose. There we go. Yeehaw! We got her off. You can do the same thing, like I said, with a hammer. Now I gotta get the flywheel off. There's a key in there. You want to make sure that that key's not off kilter. That can throw the timing off. But I'm going to put that nut back on and have it flush there. I'm going to take this screwdriver and I'm going to pry under it just a little bit in a stable place. I don't want to bend anything. And while I'm prying up on this, I want to tap this with the hammer and that usually breaks that loose if you don't have a puller, which I don't. And the reason I put that flush like that, I don't want to mess up the threads. And I'm really hitting the nut They're popped out. Beautiful. Now, if your mower's running terrible, it could be because that flywheel key has broken, or it, if it gets off just a little bit, it'll throw the timing off. So you want to make sure that key is in good shape. If you've got that problem, you can take that nut off like I just did and look down in there and make sure that key's in good shape. Otherwise, the timing's going to be way off and it either won't start or it'll run terrible. So if you're mowing and you hit a rock or you hit a, something in the ground, that flywheel key will give and that's going to mess that up then. See that key right there? Here's our wire here, connected, and our switch. And it could be this switch here. Now here's what I want to show you. I think I might have found the problem. Okay, here's the deal. This is the kill wire coming around here. It connects to this switch. 
Now, this is in the, the off position right now. So the brake is hitting the flywheel and this switch is not activated. I'll pull the handle now. And what that does is push against there and activate this switch, which opens this switch up so that the kill wire is not activated. It's not grounded. It's open. But when it's in the off position like here, then it, it's closed and it grounds the coil and that's what shuts off your engine. So here's what the problem is with this one. This V spring has gotten weak over time and it's not enough to activate this switch. I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm gonna push on it and you should hear a click. Let me bring you in closer. It's so windy, hopefully you can hear this. So when that spring is pushing against that, you're in the run position. So that's opening the switch in there. It's not connected to this wire anymore. And when it's in the off position, which it is right now, it's closed and that's sending ground over here to the coil. And that's what shuts your engine off. So I think if I open up this spring, make it stronger, so when that's activated, this is like pulling your handle. So when that's activated, it'll activate that spring to turn that switch and open, open that switch. Okay, got needle nose pliers here. I'm just gonna try to open this up more. There, it's activating it now, good. Probably when it was new, it was leaning against that just like that. Now it's stout. Electronic cleaner. It evaporates real fast. Now with this spring adjusted and that switch cleaned, we should be good to go. Let's put it back together and check it out. Put the flywheel back on them. Magnets right here. Now this key right here is what you want to make sure that's in good shape. Which that one is, that, that's fine. And if this is rusty, you can just take some fine sandpaper and sand that down. This is an aluminum flywheel here. And you can also sand the contacts on the coil too if it's rusty in there. You gotta line the key up with this notch here. There we go. Fits right down on there. Now, before I go further, I just wanna tell you, the gap for the coil on the flywheel is just a business card. So to check that, you just slide a business card in there. This screw and this screw, just back them off a little bit. That'll loosen that and it can slide back and forth. You bring this around to the magnet, push that back in, tighten these down and your gap's all set. You're all set. I can put this kill wire back in too. Beautiful. There's little nubs that go in these holes here on this particular mower. There we go. And now put the nut on. Tighten that bag down. If you want, you can just take your ratchet with the socket and just tap it with the hammer and that'll lock that in. You don't have to go crazy, especially with an aluminum flywheel. That's fine there. I'm just going to hit it with this real quick. And you, like I said, you can just do that same thing with the hammer. Might as well throw the spark plug back in while we're right here. Connect the plug wire. Now we could have tested for spark, 
before we put this back together, but it's so simple and I'm feeling confident. <laughs> I think that'll be all right. Yeah, we'll put our cover back on. Beautiful. And bring our recoil back down here. Put the nuts back on. Snug goes down. Now let me see if I have a clean air filter. That sure wasn't good. I think this one will work. I bought a pack of these. I think I got four or five or six of these for the same price it would have cost for one. Beautiful. And we're ready for the big test. Turn the fuel back on. Our new setup. Sharpen the blade, and there's a special way to tip your mower over, and if you click up in the top of the screen there, there's a video on how to do that properly, otherwise you're going to have oil leaking out all over your driveway. And when you reinstall your blade, the wings always go up towards the deck. Wings up, wings up. If you want to disconnect your spark plug while you're doing this, if you turn this, you could start the engine. So make sure your spark plug's disconnected when you're turning this under here. Even though you don't plan to turn it, it's good to be cautious.